Welcome back. A 12-year-old Alabama girl is being called a hero tonight for exposing the sadistic murders of her own mother and brother and for narrowly avoiding being killed herself. According to police and court papers, the girl was kidnapped July 24th, the same day her mother was fatally suffocated and her young brother was beaten until he died. All the crimes allegedly were committed by the same man, that guy right there, 37-year-old Jose Paulino Pascual Reyes, who police say was the mother's boyfriend. For eight days, Pascual Reyes allegedly kept the girl tied to bedposts and sedated with alcohol. And she might still be there had she not managed to chew her way, she had to chew her way out of her restraints and set off walking down a country road in Tallapoosa County. Uh, there a motorist saw her and called 911 and then police found the other victims dismembered and decomposing. Tonight, Pascual Reyes is charged with a first degree kidnapping and capital murder and he is being held uh, without bond, thank goodness. I'm joined now by Sheriff uh, Jimmy Abet of Tallapoosa County. Thank you for being with us, Sheriff. First of all, um, I, gosh, that, that little girl, it's unimaginable. Uh, how, how is she doing today? She's doing outstanding. Uh, she has been placed in the custody of the Alabama Department of Human Resources, and she is being well protected, and she's being cared for. Uh, no life-threatening threatening injuries. Uh, doing real well today. And when you say doing well, I mean, I'd imagine mentally this is going to be quite a, um, a journey, uh, having gone through that. Uh, no doubt. The middle, the middle part uh, will be a long-lasting uh, for this young lady. Do we know, Sheriff, anything about a motive? I mean, the, the details are just so gruesome. Mm -hmm. um, why would he do this? Well, we actually still, we've had local, state, and federal agencies assisting us in investigation. And at this time, some of the information we cannot share, uh, but the motive part of it uh, is something that we're uh, still investigating and, and determining, you know, what uh, caused this uh, to occur. And dismembering the body and all of those details, it just makes me wonder, I mean, it, you don't think that a, a guy just does this out of the blue. Do you think he could be connected to any other murders in the past? I mean, could he be like almost like a serial killer? Well, we're concerned with the, the murder here uh, in our in our agency now, focusing on, on on this particular case that we're investigating. And if anything that comes to light in regards to other cases, uh, surely we'll uh, be investigating those or handing off to any other agency. Uh, but our main focus right now is for uh, this individual uh, to go through our justice system in Alabama. Do you know, I mean, we've heard limited details, obviously, that she chewed through the wire, but can you give us a little more detail on how she was able to escape? Basically, that's uh, the information that we've received uh, during our initial investigation with her. Uh, when she was actually found, uh, 911 call was placed. Uh, officers responded. Uh, statements, spontaneous uh, statements from her uh, led us to believe uh, that she had been kidnapped, so the warrant was procured against uh, Jose uh, for actually uh, the kidnapping. And as a result of the kidnapping, he was arrested uh, that that afternoon in Auburn, Alabama, uh, by the U.S. Marshal Service on the kidnapping warrant. And after the kidnapping warrant, that our investigation focused in on the residents, and that's when we. Uh, discover the scene of two decomposed bodies. Was there any issue arresting him, Sheriff? I mean, did, did he just give up or how did that all go down? Uh, there was no issue in, uh, in, in the arrest. Uh, I, I don't think he knew that, uh, uh, that we had been were investigating him during that day. So it was a short period of time from like 8.30 in the morning uh, when she made the call and he was taken in custody about 12.30 uh, to 1 p.m. that day. Were and there, then, uh, sorry to interrupt you, were there other residents in the house uh, where all this happened? Uh, no other residents. There was, there was uh, Jose, uh, Sandra, uh, the 12 year old, and then the other juvenile male that's under the age of 14. Okay, wow. What, just what a terrible situation. Uh, you know, thankfully you guys are investigating. Hopefully we'll get some justice here and see how all this plays out. Sheriff uh, Jimmy Abbott, thank you so much for coming on with us tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, I want to bring in Caitlin Becker now, the senior reporter for DailyMail.com. I mean, Caitlin, like, 
I don't even have words for this story. Like this poor girl having to chew her way through the wire. She is, you know, she was hailed a hero by authorities when they first were able to rescue her. And I do think that is one of the most appropriate words. I mean, just the fortitude that she needed to have to be able to get herself out of that situation and escape in that small window of time that she did is just incredible. From what we understand, she was able to chew through those wires and escape in early in the morning while her captor was out at work. So she knew he was probably going to be away for a little bit, but she only had it at a as I said, a small window of opportunity and was able to get free. And apparently he was using alcohol to keep her sedated, which is also so awful, thinking about her just being a 12-year-old girl. Do we know any more about, like, the family history here? Like, what was going on behind the scenes? Because clearly, I mean, this didn't just come out of nowhere. So from what I understand, he is an undocumented immigrant who was previously deported to Mexico and was able to get back into the U.S. and was residing at this mobile home in Alabama and was dating the adult female, this mother who was killed, and then these were her two children. Now, she was reportedly um, waiting for an asylum claim and was on parole herself, and he was supposedly helping her with that, but those details are a little bit muddy, but it seems that is how they were connected. It is unclear whether or not the two children and the mother lived in this mobile home. However, about a month or two ago, the mom had gotten a speeding ticket or some sort of traffic ticket and used this residence as her address. So whether she was staying there long term or was in and out or was actually living there full time, it's kind of unclear. But she does have sort of a longer connection to this home and to the to the suspect. Yeah, and what the sheriff said about a 14-year-old, I think is what he said, also being in the house who was alive, I mean, you have to wonder what, what he witnessed. So I think if I'm understanding this correctly, there was someone else, there was a, a, a male in the house that was under the age of 14. Okay. And I think he was one of the bodies who was also found dismembered. So there was the brother the who was dismembered along with his mother and the girl was was in the house and as you can see from those photos this is not a very large structure so you have to wonder what she was was able to see and what was made you know known to her while she was in that corner sort of comatose state with the alcohol and tied to that bed and all of those things are going to be really really important at trial yeah and you know also thank goodness she is alive and was able to escape but it's interesting that he kept her alive but killed the rest of the family. That I think is one of the most interesting parts of this when you're looking at it from a psychological perspective. Earlier tonight, I actually spoke with a um, forensic mental health expert who really did focus in on that, that aspect of it and had a lot of questions as to the, the fact that there were two different manners of killing. The, the adult female was suffocated and the younger boy was essentially beaten to death. And then this girl, was kept alive so that there are a lot of questions there and like i said those are really going to come into play at a trial and could really you know indicate one way or another whether or not a jury is going to convict on a capital offense and decide on life mm. in prison or the death penalty i just hope that young girl can have some you know sense of normalcy and a good life at some point i'm sure it's going to take a lot of therapy with what she's Absolutely. been through uh caitlin becker thank you so much for coming on tonight Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.